Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and uh, I want to thank all our listeners for joining in on the show. Again, we're, be, we're airing this week uh, from the uh, social scene. I want to thank our friends over at the socialscene.me. Take a look at it. You'll be quite surprised organizing your social life. Uh, pretty happy I got my key number one son, Alex Dablowski, as my co-host today. <laughs> We dragged him in, and he actually said yes, tried many times. He likes to co-host without me, but welcome, Alex. Thanks a lot. Pleasure to be here, Jeff. All right. Sitting beside you. Yeah, well, hopefully you're replacing me one day. That's, that's the goal, guys. Always work succession planning from the beginning, and, uh, and Alex is the guy. Um, so I want to also thank our friends, uh, whoever showed up at our Radio Entrepreneurs Cafe. It was a resounding success. Again, thank you, Alex and Chris. Uh, and we're going to be looking forward to our next one. So please stay tuned. Watch our websites. Watch your emails. We had full occupancy within two hours of Alex sending out the invitation. So wow. if you want to meet entrepreneurs, be an entrepreneur, and be heard by entrepreneurs, you want to go to the next Radio Entrepreneurs Cafe. Thank you, Alex. It was fun. Right. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I know you stayed a lot longer than me, party boy. <laughs> <laughs> I only got criticized by one person for leaving early, and it wasn't my wife. Our next guest, uh, sorry for the delay, Charles Baruthi, right? Yes, sir. Uh, from uh, founder, co-founder, and CEO of La of Lab Lab Cloud. Welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good, uh, Charlie. Charles, uh, tell us about Lab Cloud. So um, about three years ago, we realized that there was a huge dynamic um, going on, or change in dynamic, I should say, uh, in the biotechnology market, um, particularly where um, larger companies like Merck, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, um, they were shifting their R&D priorities into smaller smaller firms, small and medium-sized firms in particular. Um, and there was a huge emergence of a um, incubator-type model coming up in Cambridge, in Boston. So Boston has now become a central hub um, globally for biotech. And um, with that, we realized that over 90% of companies in the market did not have access to um, software that was essential for their business operations. So when we say software, we mean laboratory informatics tools. We mean um, inf Fine, uh, technical scientific software. Exactly. Um, to uh, run their business and their experimentation properly. Th that's right. And um, But we also noticed in that same regard that there was a huge amount of investment going into the space. Now, um, the biggest part of any scientific firm like a biotech firm is their value is in their intellectual property. Um, and the, their long-term goal is to be able to either go into a phase three FDA, which essentially means going into clinical trials, or moving into um, an acquisition phase by a larger pharma. Um, so that's been the general strategy of what larger pharma has been trying to do, is to get into these companies very early on. Um, and uh, what we've seen as a, as a company is we want to try to get these companies from day one to start being compliant, be able to manage their purchasing, um, and to be able to keep everything in one place. 